Chapter 31, Assertive. Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios. Inside the hall, Wang Bao was sitting cross-legged in front of the blue stone wall. He had an austere expression and did not allow himself to be distracted. He focused on the spirit stone that was emitting light in his hand. I previously taught the college discipline department a lesson. They must definitely hold a grudge against me. This time, it's best I make them feel utter despair. It will make no one have any hopes of touching my spot as head prefect. Wang Bao gritted his teeth, and after taking a deep breath, he infused more spirit chi into the empty stone. As the spirit chi surged in, the empty stone gradually produced cracking sounds like it was about to shatter at any time. Such a shattering did not necessarily mean anything bad. It represented that the purity was rapidly increased. Although the refinement with an empty stone was different from Wang Bao's great void chi devouring art, he had been cultivating such a method from a young age, he was thoroughly acquainted with it. Even if he was not condensing a spirit stone out of thin air, it was just an additional step for him. Although it was somewhat superfluous, he deeply knew the importance of keeping a secret, he did not require any empty stones. He was in full concentration, and as the spirit chi surged in him, the invisible vortex around him grew bigger. Finally, it spread outside the hall, and from afar, it looked like a black hole had appeared where the hall was. This took time to describe, but in reality, only a few seconds passed. The cracking sounds produced by the spirit stone in Wang Bao's hand turned more intense, and soon, it dissipated to dust and was suddenly pulverized. With the destruction of the empty stone, the remnant core suddenly burst out with a glaring rainbow irradiance like a gem. It was extremely resplendent and dazzling. Even the hall's walls could not block the radiance. In an instant, rainbow light emanated through the hall. At the instant the radiance penetrated the hall, the radiance burst out directly, blanketing every spot outside the hall with rainbow colors. From afar, the rainbow radiance soared high above Dharma Karmament Peak. Everyone outside the hall, or even everyone in the Dharma Karmament faculty, witnessed this unforgettable scene with their own eyes. That's. That's. A rainbow radiance. A rainbow spirit stone. Heavens, it's a rainbow spirit stone. Legend has it that only by reaching 93% purity would a rainbow spirit stone, which surpasses superior great spirit stones, be formed. With the commotion, Nearly all the Dharmic Armament faculty students in the various regions of Dharmic Armament Peak saw the rainbow radiance burst out of the Spirit Stones Hall. Feeling shaken to the core, they ran toward the hall. Even on the Spirit Intranet, news regarding this matter spread like a storm. The live streaming aficionado, Little Taoist, had arrived outside the hall. He was so stunned by the scene in front of him that he forgot to request for rocket gifts. Everyone outside the hall widened their eyes when the beams burst out. Instantly, their expressions changed. Jinglin felt weak in his knees, as though he had seen a ghost. His mind turned a buzz as he failed to remain composed. He let out a cry filled with shock. Impossible. At that moment, gongs were heard. The sound spread throughout Dharma Karmament Peak and stirred everyone. They were. The gongs that symbolized the appearance of a new head prefect. There were nine gongs that represented the appearance of a new head prefect. As the gongs resounded, the noisy surroundings let out exclamations that exceeded anything from before. The head prefect gongs. Wang Bao. Has been promoted to head prefect. It's shocking. How is it possible? The entire spirit internet and dharmic armament faculty were astounded. The teachers of dharmic armament peak could not sit still either. All of them rushed over with incredulous expressions. A rainbow spirit stone has appeared. A new head prefect has appeared. In the dean's hall at the mountaintop, the goatee dean of the Dharma Karmament faculty, who held his beloved snuff bottle, was pondering over matters with his eyes closed. His eyes shot open when he heard the gongs. He was somewhat taken aback and found it inexplicable. After a moment of thought, he used his voice transmission ring to inquire only to have his eyes widen suddenly. Wang Bao. Rainbow Spirit Stone. Newly promoted head prefect. 
he trembled as Wang Baol's appearance surfaced in his mind. He could not help but feel an odd feeling rise up in him as though the piece of dog shit that he had bought blindly hid a gold nugget in it. As the gongs sent the dharmic armament faculty into a flurry and countless people exclaimed at the miraculous turn of events, the college discipline department inspectors outside the hall drew gasps as their expressions changed drastically. Under the illumination of the rainbow radiance, they appeared somewhat funny. The turning of tables had simply happened too fast. Their minds were in a state of perturbation, like the tumultuous waves of the sea in a storm. They found it impossible to comprehend the new information. As for Jang Lin, the color had drained from his face. He was trembling, unable to stand stably. The reason he led a charmed life in the Dao College was that of his identity as head prefect. But all of this, the power conferred upon him by his status, rapidly crumbled as the gongs resounded. As he felt faint, he had an extreme sense of indignation, which seemed to erupt crazily in his heart. It's absolutely impossible, Jang Lin roared as he took out a token. It was crimson red, and on it were the words head prefect engraved clearly. It was the head prefect token that was automatically given by the blue wall the instant a student became head prefect. However, the head prefect token in Jang Lin's hands were cracking noisily as though it was about to crumble to dust. Wang Bei O. Oh. Jang Lin looked at the head prefect token in his hands as his eyes turned red. The cracking lines seemed to reflect in his heart. At that moment, a deranged fit exploded from within him. Just as he was about to push up in the Spirit Stones Hall with a roar, the door opened automatically before he could touch it. As it opened, everyone cast their gaze over. They saw Wang Bei Ol walking out of the Spirit Stones Hall. He was still in his tattered student robes, but at that moment, everyone looked at him differently. He was the newly promoted head prefect. The instant he walked out, the head prefect token in Jang Lin's hand seemed incapable of withstanding the aura that Wang Baol exuded. It disintegrated immediately and turned to dust. The shattering of the token represented that Jang Lin was now history. From that moment forth, Wang Baol controlled the college discipline department. He was equal to the other two head prefects of the Dharmic Armament faculty, an important figure who no one could ignore. With the crumbling of the head prefect token, Jang Lin's entire body trembled while his eyes were filled with blood strands. He glared furiously at Wang Baol like a deranged beast. If his gaze could kill, he would have ripped Wang Baol into pieces by now. Upon noticing the crowd's shocked expressions, the dozens of black-robed inspectors, who were unable to accept the reality before them despite wielding their weapons, and in particular Jang Lin's eyes that were filled with extreme hate, Wang Baol chuckled lightly. A cold glint flashed in his eyes. He knew that if he had not become head prefect, he would definitely have been held captive. And the inspector's arrogance and acts of rushing here no doubt signaled their ill intent. Towards these people with ill intent, Wang Baol would absolutely not be merciful. He grabbed something out of his robes with his right hand, immediately pulling out a brand new, crimson red token as he held it up high. It represented authority over the college discipline department. The head prefect token. With the token revealed, everyone outside the Spirit Stones Hall felt their bodies and minds quake. As head prefect of the Spirit Stones Hall, I shall terminate your statuses as inspectors. From this moment forth, none of you are inspectors of the Spirit Stones Hall's college discipline department. Wang Bei O looked at the inspectors his cold voice reaching every corner like a cold wind that blew. It made the inspectors, who were wielding weapons, turn ghastly pale. Their bodies trembled as many of them loosened their grips, causing their weapons to fall to the ground. One sentence from Hims was enough to determine their futures. But this was not over. After he terminated their statuses, a glint flashed in Wang Baol's eyes as he spoke again. All disciplinary matters that happen during your tenure will undergo a retrial. Injustices will absolutely not be tolerated. Similarly, his one sentence no longer determine their futures but their fates. The moment that was said, the minds of all the former inspectors buzzed. Their breathing hastened, and there was someone who even roared out angrily in despair. Wang Bei Oh, you are bent on destroying us. Ignoring the former inspectors, 
who had previously cursed him viciously but were now putting on tough appearances, Wang Bao turned to look coldly at Jiang Lin. He said indifferently, Jiang Lin, as head of the college discipline department, you instigated the crowd to create a disturbance. You are now terminated of all roles in the college discipline department. You shall be remanded in the college discipline department to await trial. Wang Bao's voice was not loud, but it sounded like echoing thunder in the ears of Jiang Lin and the former inspectors. It sounded like every word he said would be enforced to the letter, and instantly, the tide had turned. It made all these people with their previously formidable stances plummet from their lofty pedestals. Wang Bao, how dare you! Everyone, attack! This Wang Bao is abusing his power. We cannot accept it. Jiang Lin was already hysterical. Everything that had happened today was too sudden. Furthermore, he had lost everything in an instant. Deep down, he still could not accept that he had been head prefect moments ago, and now, he was to be held captive. He roared with reddened eyes as he rashly ran toward Wang Bao. His eyes even had a sliver of killing intent. As for the inspectors, they were his subordinates to begin with. It would have been fine if Wang Bao had not been verbally vicious, they might have hesitated. However, now, they were about to be investigate, and all of them had skeletons in their closets. Therefore, in their raging emotions, they were bold enough to do anything. Although not everyone followed blindly, there were more than ten people who charged at Wang Bao. Wang Bao sneered. The reason he had delivered such a salient message was to make these people attack him in rage. If not, he would have had to find other reasons to deal with them. These people had previously been filled with ill intent toward him, so his decisive and assertive character presented itself at that very moment. The resistance of disciplinary enforcement adds another count to your charge. As Wang Bao spoke, he suddenly took one step forward. Chapter 32, Purge Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios As Wang Bao walked forward, he appeared in front of a former inspector that was charging at him. He suddenly pressed down at the person's extended hand, and with his twisting technique, he bent his joint. Immediately, the person screamed painfully as his wrist broke with a cracking sound. The assault of the head prefect adds another count to your charge. Wang Bao did not stop. He took another step forward and lifted his foot. He kicked another person's knee, and with the same cracking sound and tragic scream, the person wailed in pain while holding onto his knee, unable to stand up. Harassment that causes disorderliness in the Dow College adds another count. This took time to describe, but in fact, with Wang Bao's martial prowess, the inspectors who had acted rashly were quickly jolted to their senses by the excruciating pain. They slumped to the ground, wailing tragically. It was at that moment when Jiang Lin charged over with a furious roar. He had arrived in front of Wang Bao and had even taken out his Dharmic artifact. A Dharmic artifact was considered extremely precious to students. Even senior students needed to save up for years to obtain one. As for Wang Bao, he had not even seen a single Dharmic artifact up to now. Jiang Lin's Dharmic artifact was a wooden sword. The sword, which was whistling toward Wang Bao, emitted a spirit chi halo. However, it was apparent that he was still unable to fully control it. A glint flashed in Wang Bao's eyes as his body phased away, his speed rising abruptly. After he dodged the wooden sword, he came close to Jiang Lin. He raised his right hand in a bid to grab Jiang Lin's finger. He did so without problems and ruthlessly bent the finger. As the former head prefect, you were negligent in your duties, fouling up the college discipline department. Your faults cannot be tolerated. As Wang Bao spoke, Jiang Lin, who was crying out in pain, struggled to get up. But in terms of combat experience, he was too inferior to Wang Bao, who had fought in hundreds of battles in the fight club. Before he could collect himself for any further action, Wang Bao kicked out, aiming his foot straight at Jiang Lin's crotch. With a bang, the tone of Jiang Lin's painful cries changed. He was sent flying. This was still under the circumstances of Wang Bao being afraid that Jiang Lin would die. He did not use his full strength, for if he had done so, with his perfected physical seal strength, 
it was completely possible that he would have kicked Jang Lin to death, considering how it was such a weak spot. This scene was seen by everyone around him. They drew gasps, and while feeling shocked at Wang Bei Ol's attacks, it also felt like this was the first time they were getting to know him. The ones who had been beaten by him were shouting too tragically. Their fingers or wrists had suffered different degrees of fracturing. Jang Lin was the most apparent of them all. His face was nearly purple as he held his crotch. He could not even utter a sound despite having his mouth open. Teachers had already arrived in the sky by that moment. After seeing everything that had happened, they also felt deeply shocked, but no one did a thing to stop Wang Bei O. Oh. This was because Wang Bei O oh had declared the reason before every move. Furthermore, he was the newly promoted head prefect. He held power over the Spirit Stones Hall's college discipline department, and it was only normal for him to handle his subordinates and purge any undesirables. After cleanly subduing Jang Lin and the unruly inspectors, Wang Bei Ol stood there and looked at the inspectors who had not participated in the attack. I'm giving you a chance to atone for your faults. What are you waiting for? Take these students who have violated the rules back to the college discipline department. The moment Wang Bei Ol said that, the former inspectors immediately gave him an affirmative while shuddering in fear. They did not care if the people wailing on the ground were their partners. They rushed forward and took them all away. Even the ones who had been injured struggled to get up as a show of their submission. Wang Bei O oh resolved the crisis as swift as lightning, and it gave him a deep understanding of the power and stature head prefect had. He felt extremely excited. This goal that had been in the making for more than half a year had finally been accomplished. It made him find the twilight sky at dusk especially beautiful. With so many students watching his promotion, it only made it better. He took a deep breath and beamed. He looked at the crowd and teachers before cupping his fists and giving a deep bow. I will be counting on all my fellow schoolmates and teachers to take care of me in the future. This bow immediately left the still astounded students surround him solemn. They bowed back at Wang Bei O, oh, looking at him with fear and reverence. As for the teachers, although they did not share the same sentiments as the students, they no longer treated him as an ordinary student when they looked at Wang Bei O. Oh. All of them nodded, their impression toward Wang Bei O oh deepening. After all, he was head prefect, not a role the Dao College assigned. Every head prefect had earned their status through their hard work. Even if they had immense amounts of power, the Dao College's students had no qualms about it since it was all about one's intrinsic quality especially with them having come to the realization that Wang Bei Ol had only been in the Dao College for less than a year. In less than a year, he had become head prefect as a freshman. He had refined a rainbow spirit stone, and this alone represented his extraordinariness. After bowing at the surrounding students, Wang Bei Ol stood straight up. He was feeling extremely pleased with himself at that moment. He slowly breathed in and walked toward the small path that led from the spirit stone's hall. Countless pairs of eyes were fixated on him. Even the live-streaming little Taoist was shocked. It took him a while to recover before quickly he softly requested for rockets on his live stream. Guys, I am now secretly filming Wang Bei O, oh, whose huge face cannot be completely contained by the screen. He is extremely dangerous, and I'm in need of rockets to protect myself. Come on, let the rockets rain. But the moment he said that, his body shuddered as a baffling pressure bore down on him. He turned his head, and his eyes widened suddenly. He saw that Wang Bei O, oh, who had been walking toward the trail, had suddenly appeared beside him. Head. Head Prefect. Little Dallas turned short of breath. Just as he was about to say something, Wang Bei O oh leaned over and took a look at his recording device. Say, why haven't you learned how to live stream? Wang Bei Ol had a dissatisfied look. He did not snatch the recording device this time. Instead, he coughed dryly and shouted at it. Guys, did this little Taoist visit the lava chamber back then? If he didn't, tell me. I'll personally escort him there. I will absolutely not allow your rockets to be wasted for nothing. Before Wang Bei Ol finished his sentence, the viewers in the live streaming channel exploded. It immediately bustled as messages flooded the screen. 
Little Taoist held his breath as he saw messages about him not entering the lava chamber fill the screen. It had not been easy to get the viewers to let the matter pass back then. Now, with Wang Baol raising the issue again, he nearly fainted. Wang Baol snorted inwardly. He had a sharp ear and had heard Little Taoist mention how his face was huge. He was obviously not going to let the matter rest. Feeling pleased with his actions, Wang Baol happily walked into the distance with his hands behind his back while humming a tune. Soon, with Wang Baol's departure, not only was the discussion in the live stream channel boosted, tumultuous voices broke out around the Spirit Stones Hall. Only Little Taoist was left there, feeling too sorrowful for tears. He felt that Wang Baol was his nemesis in his live streaming career. At the same time, in the head prefect residence of the Dharmic Armament Faculty's Spirit Colonel Hall, there were two youths standing at its penthouse, looking far into the distance where the Spirit Stones Hall was. The both of them were two of the three head prefects of the Dharmic Armament Faculty, the inscriptions head prefect and the Spirit Colonel head prefect. The Spirit Colonel head prefect was handsome. He effused an air of nobility, and it was apparent he came from an affluent family. It was a bearing formed by the training and habits he had since he was young. Compared to the gloomy expression of the inscriptions head prefect behind him, he remained calm. Even the gongs had only made a glint flash in his eyes. At that moment, the inscriptions head prefect behind the luxurious youth looked down at his voice transmission ring and said slowly, Brother Lin, Jang Lin has been captured. The luxurious youth was somewhat surprised when he heard that. After careful questioning, he learned of the reason and could not help but chuckle. Jang Lin is too stupid. By acting himself, he only has himself to blame for being captured. However, this Wang Baol is quite an interesting fella. Brother Lin, this Wang Baol is probably different from us. Now that Jang Lin has lost his position as head prefect, we will have some trouble controlling the Dharmic Armament Faculty, said the inscription's head prefect in a deep voice as he frowned. The luxurious youth smiled upon hearing that. He was very composed as he turned to pat the inscription's head prefect's shoulder. Brother Cal, there's no hurry. Let's allow Wang Baol to feel complacent for a few days. I heard that the college will be implementing some major changes to the head prefects in the near future. The luxurious youth's smile seemed to indicate that there was something deeper. As he spoke, he turned to look back at the Spirit Stone's head prefect's residence. A look of contempt flashed in his eyes. The inscription's head prefect immediately heaved a sigh of relief when he heard what the luxurious youth had to say. When he thought of the background of the person in front of him, he felt relieved. Although he stood with the luxurious youth, one would notice that he stood half a step behind if one took a careful look. Clearly, the luxurious youth was the leader. In fact, among the three head prefects of the Dharmic Armament Faculty, it was the spirit colonel head prefect that held the greatest power. Apart from his identity as head prefect, what was more important was his exceedingly terrifying background. The inscription's head prefect could only guess the luxurious youth's background, he had nothing comprehensive. However, he had once personally witnessed the powerful vice-chancellor of the Lower Academy Island appear very polite to the spirit colonel head prefect. He was even willing to abide by his wishes to arrange certain matters for him. For example, he had helped him arrange to obtain a specially recruited student nomination for this batch's Dharma Karmament faculty. Although he had ultimately failed, the reason was not the vice-chancellor's fault. Instead, it had to do with the surprise that was Wang Bao. Wang Bao. The inscription's head prefect smiled. After being relieved of his pressure, he took on a new view of him. He felt that even if Wang Bao had some means, he would have to learn to bow his head in the Dharmic Armament Faculty. Chapter 33, Lu Dabin's Talent Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios That night, Little Taoist pleaded on the live stream, again and again, using all possible means to get the viewers to let the matter pass or promise them a whole other bunch of things before they agreed to allow him to enter the lava chamber in separate instances. When he entered the lava chamber, he sat there and experienced the high temperatures of his surroundings. 
The tears that came out of his eyes immediately evaporated as he held his recording device high while trembling. Guys, your host, Little Daoist, is now in the lava chamber. Don't worry. It's only 37 rockets. I'll definitely finish them all. But before he finished his sentence, a newcomer entered his live streaming channel. The newcomer's nickname was very domineering. It was Federation President Daddy. The moment the user entered, he sent 10 rockets. As they whooshed across the recording device's screen, he left a message. Little Taoist, all the best. Here are 10 rockets for you, for an additional 20 hours. Little Taoist was instantly dumbfounded. He usually loved receiving rockets, but today, in this lava chamber, he did not want any of them. However, he understood that for someone to easily give 10 rockets upon entry meant that they were a huge client. He immediately thanked him. Thank you, Federation President Daddy. For your rockets. As he spoke halfway, he found the name extremely odd. As he bit the bullet to finish reading the name, Federation President Daddy appeared very happy, sending him another 10 rockets. After the gift, Federation President Daddy did not stay long. He quickly went offline, leaving Little Taoist feeling pleasantly surprised and in a dilemma. Meanwhile, News of Wang Baol's promotion to head prefect of the Spirit Stones Hall spread widely in the Dharmic Armament Faculty. While it caused an uproar as well as stir attention, all the Dharmic Armament Faculty students knew very well that the figures who held power in the Dharmic Armament Faculty no longer included Jing Lin but now had the addition of Wang Baol. The next morning was ushered in as a star due to Wang Baol's promotion continued outside. Wang Baol stood in front of his cave abode's mirror wearing a set of purple head prefect robes. He took in the material as well as the might it exuded, one that far exceeded his specially recruited robes. He looked at the mirror with his chin up for quite some time. As he looked at his rotund self in the mirror, Wang Baol's eyes seemed to have an automatic filter. He looked from different angles as he posed in different ways, finding himself more and more impressive. How handsome! And so slim at that! Good at studies too. Just too excellent. I can't even help but worship myself. While Wang Bao lost himself to his delusions, he subconsciously took out a bag of snacks. As he ate, he continued looking at himself in the mirror. At times, he would look turn his head or body to the side. Admiring his perfect body from different angles. I'm so envious of these head prefect robes. If they had intelligence, they would definitely feel honored to be donned by such a handsome man. After finishing his snacks moments later and feeling satisfied, Wang Baol held his head and chest high while walking out his cave abode. He went straight to the Spirit Stones Hall's head prefect pavilion and began his first day as head prefect. As he walked over, all the students who saw Wang Baol would stop and respectfully greet him. The three head prefects wielded too much power. Although they were responsible over the college discipline department and had overlapping degrees of responsibilities among themselves, they generally held independent roles. The respective head prefect pavilion would have absolute authority over any violator of the college regulations it caught. Therefore, to ordinary students, the head prefect was absolutely not to be offended. It was even to the point that if the head prefect took good care of them, they would definitely lead a comfortable life in the Dao College. After receiving endless greetings, Wang Baol was feeling extremely pleased, especially when he saw many female schoolmates greet him with sweet voices. Some even requested his contact information. Wang Baol's spirits rose as his eyes lit up. He was more and more impressed by the benefits the status as head prefect gave him. Hence, he would chuckle and greet them back. He felt that the sun was particularly bright and the sky extremely blue. In his good mood, Wang Baol arrived at the Spirit Stones Hall's head prefect pavilion. The moment he came close, he saw more than 70 inspectors standing outside head prefect pavilion. They were standing there orderly and solemnly, and the moment they noticed Wang Baol, all 70 plus of them greeted him with gusto and unison. Good morning, head prefect. The 70 plus black robed inspectors had bent their backs in unison. Their uniform voices immediately attracted many students who were passing by. All of them turned their heads and discussed among themselves. 
schoolmates, good morning. Wang Bao coughed dryly. His hands were held behind his back, and with an entourage of black-robed inspectors, he stepped into the head prefect pavilion. The black-robed inspectors were all fawning and treating him carefully as they walked from the main door of head prefect pavilion to the head prefect office. Head prefect, you came over so early in the morning. I believe you haven't had breakfast, am I right? I've already bought it for you. It's placed on your table. Head Prefect, my family is from Wuyi City 1. I have already brewed a pot of the spirit tea that it produces. Head Prefect, we both share a common hobby. I also love eating snacks. I have already bought all of them for you, as well as ice spirit water. They have been chilled, and you can drink them at your pleasure. It will greatly refresh you. Upon hearing them, Wang Bao felt extremely pleased. However, he took on a resigned facade and pointed at them. Wang Bao coughed dryly before he spoke categorically. All of you, what should I do about you? Don't do this in the future. As students, you have to first establish yourselves, watch your speech, and finally mind your conduct. Head Prefect, you are right. We were at fault. The black-robed inspectors immediately answered. From their reply, it could be seen that they had put in a great deal of effort. After all, they had found out Wang Bao's preferences overnight and learned what he had previously said. None of them had slept the previous night. They had been uneasy, knowing that, although Wang Bao appeared amiable and jovial, they had heard how he had taken down more than ten inspectors and Jing Lini yesterday outside the Spirit Stones Hall. He had terminated their statuses in public and had apprehended them. The swift judgment left them alarmed and afraid. There were even some of them who had borne witness yesterday. They knew that the seemingly harmless Swang Bao was very terrifying once decorum was lost. Furthermore, all of them were riddled with crimes. None of them dared not work hard. As he briefly enjoyed the crowd's flattery, Wang Bao held his hands to his back, feeling very pleased. After he entered his head prefect office, he could not help but sigh when he saw the luxurious room. I must not waste the kindness of my schoolmates, considering how well they protect and take care of me. As Wang Bao sighed, he drank the nourishing spirit tea and the exquisite breakfast his subordinate had bought for him. Then, he took out a bag of snacks and, as he ate, pondered over things. Finally, he instructed someone to summon Lu Dabin. Soon, Lu Dabin was politely invited over by the inspectors. After he saw Wang Bao inside the head prefect office, Lu Dabin felt mixed emotions and was a little lost. Although he had learned that Wang Bao had become head prefect yesterday, he still found it incredible. Wang. Just as he was about to shout out Wang Bao's name, the inspector beside him glared at him. Lu Dabin's heart tightened as he instinctively recalled the scenes he had seen from his father. He immediately took a few brisk steps over and gave Wang Bao a deep bow. Greetings, Head Prefect. Davin, why are you this way, too? We are all schoolmates. What's all this about greetings? Wang Bao feigned anger and went forward to get Lu Davin to stand up straight. He dismissed the inspectors around him and invited Lu Davin to take a seat. Davin, it's been half a year in a blink of an eye. I still recall the turn of events back during our test. Wang Bao stroked the tiny stubble that had just grown out his chin, as though he was recalling the past. This was an opening statement he had learned from the high officials' autobiographies. However, regardless of how one looked at it, having such an expression as a teenager just felt odd. Lu Dabin found it odd as well but quickly repressed his thoughts. Although he had been invited by Wang Bao to sit, he recalled the actions his father did daily when facing superiors. He quickly mimicked his father and sat forward, taking only half of the seat. He wore a very attentive expression on his face. Head Prefect, it was all thanks to you for saving my life. I, Davin, will never forget it. He waited for Wang Bao to finish his sentence, and his response was in line with Wang Bao's words. Now that there are no outsiders here. You can call me by my name. Davin, I do not treat you as an outsider. Wang Bao sized up Lu Dabin and was first amazed by Lu Dabin's sitting stance and reply before being very pleased. However, 
he was quite perplexed as to how Lou Dabin appeared more attuned toward the etiquette among official circles than he was. Has he also read the high officials' autobiographies? While Wang Bao remained perplexed, he secretly remembered the way Lou Dabin sat and studied it inwardly. Lou Dabin immediately answered with the affirmative. He deliberately made himself look relaxed, but, in fact, he did not change the way he sat at all. This way, the two engaged in a casual conversation that broadened Wang Bao's horizons. He suddenly felt that Lu Dabin was very impressive. I didn't notice it before, but this fellow has quite a special way of doing things. Wang Bao felt that he had benefited greatly. He then suggested his earnest intention to make Lu Dabin one of the inspectors of the Spirit Stones Hall's College Discipline Department. The moment he said that, Lu Dabin's breathing immediately hastened. Even though he was well-read and had learned a lot of knowledge from his father, he was still a young man. The moment he heard that he could become an inspector, he immediately stood up in excitement. Thank you, head prefect. I will definitely obey any instructions you have for me in the future. Wang Bao laughed out loud, and after giving Lu Dabin a few words of encouragement, he promoted a few students from Phoenix City. Finally, he let Lu Dabin recommend a few people before making all those people become inspectors of the Spirit Stones Hall's College Discipline Department by giving his orders as head prefect. I just took over this college discipline department. Dabin, you will have to help me watch it in the future. Finally, Wang Bao gave him a few more instructions before the extremely excited Lu Dabin took his leave. He sat in his chair, placed his leg on the table, and drank the ice spirit water. He felt especially good as he picked up a dossier placed on the table and began casually browsing it. These dossiers were about matters that the Spirit Stones Hall's inspectors had dealt with regarding college regulation violations. They needed his final decision. Upon seeing the thick dossier, Wang Bao gave it a cursory glance. Apart from a person named Sun Kafeng, who had been caught for stealing the manuals of the Dharmic Armament faculty, the others were trivial violations of the college regulations. Even the severity of theft of manuals could vary. All these were cases where the Spirit Stones Hall inspectors had made the arrest, therefore, Wang Bao had the absolute power to deal with them. After a quick glance, he found it boring and threw the dossier to the side before continuing eating his snacks. This college discipline department just needs them to be afraid of me. I do not have the time and effort to deal with such matters. Back in the test, Lu Dabin quickly organized a group of people and acted as leader. He seems rather experienced. I can consider letting him watch them. From a young age, Wang Bao's dream had been to become the Federation president. Now that he had become head prefect, he felt that he had taken a big step toward becoming the Federation president. However, power was only a secondary reason for him wanting to become the Federation president. More importantly, he did not wish to be bullied by others. Now that he had become head prefect, he believed that it was unlikely anyone in the Dharmic Armament faculty could bully him. With this thought in mind, Wang Bao did not wish to stay any longer. He went out and circled the grounds before exchanging for the Chief Fostering Arts second volume in the manuals of the study of inscriptions. He returned to his cave abode and began cultivating as well as researching the second volume of the Chief Fostering Art. From his point of view, he had already attained his goal. He was here in the Dao College to study. In the coming days, all he needed to do was focus on his studies. Time passed, and soon, a week was over. During this week, Wang Bao would occasionally head to head prefect pavilion while spending most of his time researching the second volume of the chief fostering art. Although he was not around, Lu Dabin managed to surprise Wang Bao once again with his management talent in the week following his promotion. Everything was handled in a very methodical manner, and any matters, be they major or minor, would be reported politely to Wang Bao in a summary for his call. He made sure to not make Wang Bao misunderstand or have thoughts that he was seizing power. In fact, the Dao College's head prefect pavilions had no instances of power usurpation. When it came down to it, the head prefect pavilion had the power of appointment, allowing them to level any matters if one overstepped one's bounds. This was something Lu Dabin knew very well. 
Meanwhile, in the combat faculty. Although he was not head prefect, Lu Zhao secretly mustered himself to battle Chen Saiheng and Zhuo Yifan for the post of head prefect. He was suspiciously checking the news about Wang Bao on the spirit internet when he took notice of some pictures. The more he stared at Wang Bao in the pictures, the more he felt something amiss. Moments later, he took out his voice transmission ring and immediately sent a voice transmission to Zhu Lu's younger sister from the fight club. Zhu Jing, help me gather the information regarding the shameless fat rabbit. I think I've found a target. Chapter 34, Dharmic Armament Money Bags Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios Wang Bao was very pleased having Lu Dabin in charge of the college discipline department. He also placed more time and effort on the second volume of the Chief Fostering Art. The second volume could only be obtained by people who could refine spirit stones at 80% purity or higher. It also described information regarding the other two main topics in the Dharmic Armament faculty. They were respectively the study of inscriptions and spirit kernels. At that moment, Wang Bao was sitting cross-legged in his cave abode. As he ate his snacks, he was studying the second volume of the Chief Fostering Art. He was no longer uninformed about the Dharmic Armament faculty, unlike Buck when he had first arrived at the Dao College. After half a year of interactions, he had a very good understanding of the faculty. He knew that the so-called Dharmic Armament faculty was about the refinement of Dharmic artifacts. And the refinement process had five steps. The first three steps could be learned in the lower academy island. As for the final two steps, they could only be learned after being accepted into the upper academy island. Spirit stones, inscriptions, spirit kernel, material refinement, forging. Wang Bao ruminated as he ate his snacks. The second volume of the Qi Fostering Art introduced the different grades of Dharmic artifacts. The first and second grades were known as Dharmic artifacts. From the third to sixth grade, they were known as numinous treasures. At the seventh grade, they were considered dharmic armaments. In addition, armament marks were introduced. Only when an artifact became a third grade numinous treasure would three natural marks appear, representing its grade. The present federation's artifact refinement methods came from methods recorded on the gigantic sword fragments. Everything was based on the foundation of spirit stones. To refine a dharmic artifact, the first step was to refine a spirit stone. Following that, one had to inscribe the spirit stone with inscriptions. Different inscriptions would determine the differences between the usage and direction to which a dharmic artifact could develop. Spirit stones were the foundation, while inscriptions were the skeleton. Their importance was so great that they were known as the core of dharmic artifacts. Every inscription had a unique effect. When inscriptions matched with one another, they would generate even more changes. To refine a dharmic artifact, one had to make a robust foundation, and the more one was familiar with inscriptions, the easier it was to refine a dharmic artifact in the future. Therefore, the second volume of the Qi Fostering Art contained quite a lengthy record. It contained all sorts of inscriptions. Wang Bao made a rough estimate, and just the number of inscriptions recorded in the Qi Fostering Art's second volume was no fewer than a hundred thousand. This was not including the inscription dictionary handed out by the inscriptions hall. The number of inscriptions in that manual numbered as many as a million. If the inscriptions changed as a result of the matching interactions, one would have to memorize even more. It was not an exaggeration to describe it as a sea of information. The inscriptions hall of the Dharmic Armament Faculty's three halls tested the students on their memorization of inscriptions. There was no trick to such memorization, and success depended on the individual. It was just too difficult to memorize and understand a million available inscriptions. Even the present inscriptions hall's head prefect could only memorize 400,000 inscriptions. As for more, not only did it need talent, it also needed perseverance and time. Once someone became accomplished in inscriptions, they could mix and match the million fixed inscriptions to a certain extent to create brand new effects. However, such acts required a deep foundation. Only an artifact refinement master was capable of doing so. As the memorization was too difficult, 
The inscriptions Hall of Ethereal Dao College's Dharmic Armament Faculty only tested on the number of inscriptions one memorized, but in fact, as long as one memorized more than a hundred thousand inscriptions, one would pass it and be allowed to begin the study of spirit kernels. After all, there were just too many inscriptions. It was completely impossible for the average person to memorize all of them. Therefore, there were inscription dictionaries that aided them. However, an inscription dictionary was still very different from a word dictionary. In addition, the refinement of artifacts typically had a strict requirement on time. There were also many variations. While the checking of an inscription dictionary needed time, there was also a need to understand and have a basic mastery of things. Therefore, although an inscription dictionary was useful, the aid given was not especially great. After roughly studying the rest of the Chi Fostering Arts second volume, Wang Baol took a deep breath. He knew deep down that, although he was currently the Spirit Stones Hall's head prefect, he had only embarked on his first step into the subject of Dharmic armaments. I still need to continue working hard. Wang Baol picked up the inscription dictionary and casually flipped it open. When he saw the dense records and the sinuous inscription dictionary, he immediately felt a migraine coming on. Moments later, he gritted his teeth and began memorizing. However, such memorization was limited. For a million, even Wang Baol felt a deep sense of helplessness toward it despite his belief that he had a good memory. Although the inscription dictionary mentioned a few pills that could aid one's memories, Wang Baol discovered on the spirit internet that these pills were pretty much priceless. They were even rarer than the cleansing pill. To obtain any required a bit of luck. In addition, although these pills were effective, they would ultimately result in drug resistance. If one ate too many, one could even hallucinate. Therefore, one could not solely rely on pills to memorize. Inevitably, people still had to rely on themselves. Wang Baol sighed, and as he searched for the pills, he bit the bullet and began memorizing bit by bit. Time quickly passed, and soon, another week was over. During this week, there were students that called on him nearly every day. They would deliver all sorts of gifts, but in response to these, Wang Baol would directly reject them. He was categorical about it since he had read the high officials' autobiographies. He knew that accepting gifts so flagrantly was not right. Apart from the visits and gifts from Dharma Armament faculty students, the head prefects from the other faculties also successively sent congratulatory gifts. Although they were simple gifts, all of them left a voice transmission ring mark. Clearly, they intended to acquaint themselves with Wang Bei O. Wang Bei O placed a great emphasis on these other faculty head prefects. He accepted their gifts because he knew the importance of a social circle. Hence, he sent them gifts in return, and although they had never met, they established ties in this way. Another few days passed until Wang Bei O, who was becoming groggy from memorizing the inscriptions, received a gift from the alchemy faculty's vegetation head prefect, Zhang Liang. The gift was very precious, and it far exceeded any gift of the other head prefects. It was a crystal memory pill. This pill was recorded in the inscription dictionary as one of the pills that could aid in one's memory. It was difficult to buy it on the market, and it was definitely not cheap. It left Wang Bao greatly surprised. As he held the pill bottle, he looked at the crystalline pill inside. As he felt moved, Wang Bao fell silent for a moment. He activated his voice transmission ring and connected to vegetation head prefect Zhang Liang's voice transmission ring with the mark that had come with the gift. The communication with Zhang Liang went smoothly. Wang Bao first thanked him for his pills politely. After a casual conversation, Zhang Liang invited Wang Bao to the alchemy faculty. He probably guessed that Wang Bao was puzzled by the pill. With a smiling tone, Zhang Liang spoke through the voice transmission ring. Junior brother Bei O, oh, to be honest. I have refined a pill and am in desperate need for spirit stones above 90% purity to be used as the Cauldron Fire's foundation. As you know, such spirit stones are not easily bought on the market, so I thought of troubling you. Upon hearing Zhang Liang's words, Wang Bei O oh also understood the reason. He laughed out loud and did not reject it. He accepted Zhang Liang's invitation. 
Zhang Liang was very pleased as he made an appointment with Wang Bao before ending the conversation. An ethereal Dao College, unless they were head prefects of the same faculty, the head prefects would have a very cordial relationship among themselves. They were also willing to befriend each other at a deeper level. After all, everyone was of the same standing. If their friendship reached a certain extent, they could be very helpful to each other. Days later, Wang Bao left his cave abode at the appointed time. He walked toward the alchemy faculty. Wang Bao had spent most of his time on Dharma Armament Peak despite having lived in Ethereal Dao College for half a year. He seldom went to the other faculties, and it was his first time visiting to the alchemy faculty. As he walked on the alchemy faculty's mountain peak, he looked at the luxuriant vegetation, pavilions, and buildings around him. He immediately felt the difference between the Dharmic Armament Faculty and the Alchemy Faculty. The spirit chi here is actually richer than the Dharmic Armament Faculty. Furthermore, it's a lot milder. Wang Bao was very sensitive to spirit chi after cultivating in the Great Void Chi Devouring Art. As he marveled while proceeding forward, a herbal fragrance could be detected in the surrounding air. The further he proceeded, the thicker the herbal fragrance became. Eventually, Wang Bao discovered that the entire alchemy peak was lingering with herbal fragrance. The herbal fragrance that entered his nose did not aid his cultivation in any way, but it raised his spirits. It left Wang Bao surprised. There were herbal gardens outside every building, and he could see many students engaging in plantation work. Apart from that, he also saw students setting up stalls along the road. They would promote the pills they refined. Some alchemical cauldrons were even for sale. Many people would take a look when they pass by. Some would immediately buy anything that they fancied. This scene was not something seen in the Dharmic Armament Faculty. As Wang Bao passed by, he felt that the alchemy faculty was clearly simpler and more elegant, especially with the number of girls taking the majority. It was a treat for the eyes. This place is great. I should have entered the alchemy faculty back then. As Wang Bao marveled at the alchemy faculty, many of the alchemy faculty students that had set up stalls also noticed him. They instantly recognized Wang Bao and began discussing him in whispers. Wang Bao's reputation preceded him. Ever since he entered the Dao College, a series of events relating to him had pushed him to prominence, especially with his promotion to head prefect. It had spread throughout the Dao College. His fame was so great that students from the various other faculties had long since heard of him. It's Swang Bao. People from the Dharmic Armament Faculty are rich to begin with. As head prefect, I heard that Wang Bao is able to refine spirit stones of 90% purity. He's basically a walking money bag. Humphrey, what's the big deal? All he does is refine spirit stones. There's no way he can compare with our alchemy faculty. This was not the Dharmic Armament Faculty after all. Therefore, the students did not seem to show any fear while discussing him. There was some hint of sour grapes, as the money-printing reputation of the Dharmic Armament Faculty left the other faculties jealous and envious. After reaching the perfected physical seal realm, Wang Bao's ears had become sharper. When he heard those discussions, he pricked up his brows and curled the corners of his mouth. He went straight for the students who had set up shop, and the moment he came over, all the students looked at him. Wang Bao ignored the crowd's gazes and lowered his head to look at the pills being sold. Then, he raised his right hand and pointed at a few pill pills. This, and that. Put these two pills aside. Wang Bao pointed at the store that was run by a ponytailed girl. She had been one of the ones who had spoken with a sour tone. When she saw Wang Bao come, she had first been taken aback before being pleasantly surprised. However, when she heard that Wang Bao was apparently only buying two of the most ordinary pills, she immediately lost her fervor. She pouted, thinking to herself that the Dharmic Armament faculty was not as crazy as people made it out to be. The way he spent was even inferior to students from other faculties. Therefore, she languidly picked up the pills that Wang Bao had pointed out. Just as she was about to hand it to Wang Bao, he said, I don't want these two. I'll take the rest. The moment he said that, 
The girl with the ponytail widened her eyes. She was somewhat taken aback as the other students that had set up shop as well as those choosing pills quivered. All of them looked toward Wang Bei O. Oh. What? Aren't you selling them? Wang Bei O oh coughed, feeling extremely pleased with himself. However, he had a nonchalant air to his expression. It felt like he was not buying pills, but out buying cabbage at the market. Yes, definitely. The ponytailed girl became extremely excited. She rushed to wrap up all the pills without thought and excitedly handed them to Wang Bei O. Oh. After a moment's thought, she decided to just stand behind Wang Bei O oh while holding onto the goods. Head Prefect, there's no need for you to carry them. I'll carry these pills for you. In the future, if you have any requests, you can tell me at any time. Why don't you leave me your contact details? If you have any requests, I'll personally deliver the pills to your cave abode. The ponytailed girl had average looks, but her figure was extremely provocative. In her excitement, her eyes had a strange glint. That's good. Carry them for me then. Wang Bao felt pleased as he continued walking toward the next stall with his hands behind his back. Nearly all the students who had set up shop, be they men or women, were bubbling with excitement. They charged forward, trying their best to promote their pills. Head Prefect, you are so handsome. Look at the pills I have here. Each one is personally refined by me. Handsome Head Prefect, I have some pills here. Come take a look. Wang Bao could not help but feel wistful when he saw how they were fawning over him instantly despite their previously envious attitudes. He felt that, as a Dharmic Armament Faculty Head Prefect, he needed to make the people from the Alchemy Faculty understand how the Dharmic Armament Faculty spent money. Therefore, he waved his hand without much thought. I'll buy it. The moment he said that, the Alchemy Faculty students around him immediately exclaimed in excitement. Most of them were females. Their tiny faces blushed red with excitement. Even with ordinary looks, they looked different with their blushing, red faces. Therefore, when the Vegetation Hall's head prefect, Zhang Liang, rushed over, he saw a group of people circling around Wang Bei O, oh, carrying bags of all shapes and sizes. All of them looked at him with a strange glint in their eyes as they took the initiative to request his contact details. Chapter 35, Vegetation Head Prefect Zhang Liang Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios The Head Prefect of Alchemy Faculty's Vegetation Hall, Zhang Liang, was a third-year student. He was handsome with sword-like brows and eyes like stars. He had an elegant bearing about him. When he arrived, he had a faint smile, but when he saw Wang Bei Ol and the girls surrounding him, his expression turned odd. It was as though Wang Bei Ol's entire body was emitting a luster akin to a spirit stone at that moment. And the girl's passion made Zhang Liang smile wryly. He had mixed emotions that stemmed from the sore feelings of seeing someone from another faculty come to his own faculty to hit on girls. However, he was a head prefect after all. He quickly shrugged away those thoughts and, with a laugh, revealed an amiable smile. Are you junior brother Bei Ol? I'm Zhang Liang from the Alchemy Faculty. Zhang Liang wore a warm look as he walked over with a smile. There were seven or eight students that followed him. All of them endured the strange feelings in their hearts as they greeted Wang Bei O. Oh. Simultaneously, they sized him up, since he had become extremely famous in recent days. Even they had paid attention to his escapades. Greetings, Senior Brother Zhang. Wang Baol noticed Zhang Liang and hurriedly extricated himself from the cellars. He went forward to cup his fists. As he spoke, he flicked his sleeve, took out a spirit stone of 90% purity, and handed it over. Senior Brother Zhang, I'm someone who has always been impressed with people that focus on alchemy. I should have prepared a gift on my first trip here, but since I'm in a rush, I hope you will accept the spirit stone I personally refined. Wang Bao placed the spirit stone in Zhang Liang's hand amid laughter. The spirit stone was a way of returning the favor of the crystal memory pill. Besides, he had deliberately made it known that he had personally refined the spirit stone. Zhang Liang's smile immediately widened. He did not stand on ceremony with Wang Bao and put away the spirit stone before taking out a bottle to hand it to Wang Bao. 
Junior Brother Bay O. Inside is a spirit clearing pill I refined. It can clear one's mind, and it makes memorizing things a lot easier. One had the intention to befriend, while the other was tactful. Soon, the two were talking cheerfully. The students who had followed Zhang Liang exchanged looks and saw the recondite look in each other's eyes when they saw this scene. They realized that Wang Bei O oh really lived up to his reputation. Even if he was lacking in other aspects, just his way of treating others made him spectacular. With Zhang Liang leading the way, the duo proceeded forward. Along the way, they would encounter other students from the alchemy faculty who would greet them with cupped fists. Soon, the duo became more acquainted with each other. After all the scenic points of the alchemy faculty were introduced, Zhang Liang invited Wang Bao to his head prefect pavilion with a smile. This head prefect pavilion was different from the Dharmic armament faculties as well. Most obvious was the surrounding vegetation, which was filled with spirit qi, and when Wang Bao saw it, he could not help but marvel. Zhang Liang chuckled as he said generously, Junior brother Bei O, oh, if you like it, I can get someone to send you some of their seeds. You can plant them around your cave abode as a decoration. Wang Bei O oh immediately thanked him. As he looked at the hands Zhang Liang in front of him, he felt that they clicked well. Hence, he took out four spirit stones of 90% purity and handed them over. The moment Zhang Liang saw that, he was immediately delighted. He carefully took them, cupped his fists, and bowed at Wang Bei O. Oh. Thank you, Junior Brother Bei O. Oh. He had a very sincere expression. He was indeed in desperate need for spirit stones of 90% purity, and he also wished to befriend Wang Bei O. Oh. With Wang Bei O oh being so generous, his fondness for Wang Bei O oh was greatly elevated. He got up, took out two pill bottles and place them in front of Wang Bei O. Oh. Junior Brother Bei O, oh, there are a total of five crystal memory pills here. Unfortunately, that is all I have, but don't you worry. I'll arrange to buy more for you. According to their agreement over the voice transmission ring, they would exchange a spirit stone for a pill. When Wang Bei O oh saw that Xing Liang had taken out an additional two, he knew that he was returning a favor with a favor. Hence, he smiled thanked him, and put them away. He began conversing with Zhang Liang, and although it was their first meeting, they gradually regretted that they had not met earlier amid their joy. Finally, Zhang Liang decided to extend an invitation to Wang Bao after hearing about his interest in pill refinement. Junior Brother Bao, oh, if you are in no hurry to return, why don't I bring you to tour our alchemy faculty's alchemical labs? They are extremely big allowing for thousands of people to refine their pills at the same time. Inside is bustling, and people aren't usually permitted entry. Wang Bao was indeed curious about alchemy. He agreed readily, and with Zhang Liang leading the way, he arrived in the famous alchemical labs of the alchemy faculty. They were located in the alchemy peak's interior and were massive in size. The moment he entered, Wang Bao felt a hot gust of air embrace him. He could see everything in the massive space ahead at a glance. There were thousands of alchemical cauldrons inside the space, with many alchemy faculty students refining pills by the side of the alchemical cauldrons. There were chambers lining the surroundings with herbal fragrances flowing out of them. The scene was very spectacular, and it made Wang Bao deeply shocked when he swept his gaze over the lab. How is it? There are some differences compared to the spirit cauldron cave of your dharmic armament faculty, right? Zhang Liang laughed as he led Wang Bao Lin. When the surrounding people saw him, they immediately greeted him respectfully. Wang Bao could not help but exclaim, I thought that pill refinement was similar to artifact refinement in the past. But from the looks of it, there are quite a number of major differences. He had not been to the Dharmic Armament Faculty's Spirit Cauldron Cave either, but he had heard of it. In principle, it was only open to senior students who had grasped a certain level when it came to the study of spirit kernels. In there, they could easily gain rudimentary experience at fusing material and creating simple, ungraded Dharmic artifacts. While Wang Bao was marveling at his surroundings, his gaze suddenly came to a pause. He saw a girl among the group of people. 
She was wiping her sweat and was jumping for joy as she opened the alchemical cauldron's lid in front of her. She seemed to even let out a pleasant cry of surprise. Funny. Wang Baol's eyes lit up as he raised his hand to shout a greeting. Juzia. Bunny was opening a cauldron, happily looking inside at the pills that she had refined by herself. She carefully took them out, but when she heard someone call out to her, she curiously looked up and around. Soon, she saw Wang Baol waving his hands at her. She was immediately pleasantly surprised. Bao. Bunny's eyes were very bright. Her already pleasant mood turned to joy after seeing Wang Bao. She hurriedly ran in front of Wang Bao. Juzia? Jun your brother Bao, I remember that back when you first joined the Dao College, you had once confessed on the spirit internet. Zhang Liang swept his gaze at Juzia as he gave Wang Bao a teasing look. At the same time, he remembered Juzia's name and was prepared to inform his subordinates to take good care of her. Although Zhang Liang had brought up past matters, Wang Bao laughed out loud due to his thick skin. However, Juzia was thin-skinned. Her face blushed immediately. She lowered her head, feeling a little embarrassed, but she suddenly recalled something and looked up again. She stretched out her tiny hand and said happily, Bao, I can already refine pills now. Look, this is a rainbow pill I just refined. Does it look pretty? Juzia was very excited, as though she wanted to share her joy with Wang Bao. In the middle of her palm was a colorful pill that appeared as beautiful as her. Zia, I find your hands prettier, said Wang Bao with a blinking smile. Bunny immediately blushed again as she glared at Wang Bao, but deep down, she felt very happy. By the way, where's Dumen? Wang Bao recalled Dumen when he saw Bunny. He could not help but look around but there were just too many people. He could not instantly pinpoint her. Sister Duman isn't here. She's really impressive. She has been taken in as a disciple of the alchemy faculty's dean. Bunny had an envious look, but she also had a pleased look. It was as through the more excellent Duman was, the happier she would be. That impressive? Wang Bao was taken aback. Jun your brother Bao, you also know Duman? Zhang Liang was astonished when he heard Duman's name. He began to explain when he noticed Wang Bao looking at him. This Duman is quite a remarkable person. Her talent in alchemy is astonishing. She has been taken in as a disciple of our faculty dean. Although she is not head prefect, her status and standing are extraordinary as well. Wang Bao touched his nose. He had the feeling of taking a blow before he could even flaunt his identity as head prefect in front of her. However, Wang Bao could understand when he recalled the experiences Duman had undergone since she was young. She's an A grade student. She has been one since she was young. While Wang Bao felt a little sour deep down, he also felt that he needed to work harder. If not, it would be embarrassing if he were overtaken by washboard men. He had a casual chat with Bunny, but she had no choice but to bid Wang Bao farewell reluctantly as she had yet to complete the refinement of another cauldron of pills. She then returned to continue the refinement. As for Wang Bao, he watched for a moment before suggesting his departure. With Ang Liang sending him off, he walked to the entrance of Alchemy Peak. Having sent Wang Bao here, Zhang Liang looked at him and suddenly whispered, Jun your brother Bao. We hit it off very nicely, and it might seem that I am saying too much as someone you've just met, but I do have to warn you that the complexities of your dharmic armament faculty run deep. Wang Baol's expression changed as he listened carefully. When Zhang Liang saw Wang Baol's expression, he continued in a low voice. Previously, the three head prefects of your dharmic armament faculty were unlike the head prefects of the other faculties. They were very united. It also has to do with them having close ties with the vice chancellor. Therefore, it results in your Dharma Karmament faculty's dean having nearly no authority in matters regarding college discipline. And the main reason your Dharma Karmament faculty's head prefects are united has to do with the spirit colonel head prefect, Lin Tianhao. He has a huge background. Unfortunately, I have not been able to discover his true identity. 
Zhang Liang shared whatever he knew with Wang Baol and warned him before patting him on the shoulder. He bade farewell and left after telling him that the pills he had previously bought would be sent to the Dharmic Armament faculty. Wang Baol blinked when he saw Zhang Liang walk far away. He could tell the good intentions from the warning that Zhang Liang had given to him. After some thought, he kept it close to his heart. Isn't it because he has a powerful father? He is a head prefect, but so am I. What's there to be afraid of? Didn't Zhuo Yifan also have a background? Didn't he get beaten by me as he rightfully deserved? With this conclusion, Wang Bao immediately relaxed. As he hummed a tune with his hands behind his back, he returned to Dharmic Armament Peak. The moment he entered the cave abode, he saw Lu Dabin reverently standing there with a bag. He appeared to have been waiting for quite some time. When he noticed Wang Bao, he took a deep breath, adjusted his clothing, and walked quickly to Wang Bao to bow with cupped fists. Greetings, Head Prefect. Ah, Davin, you came. You must have waited quite some time. Why didn't you tell me you would be coming? Wang Baol smiled faintly. He felt that ever since Lu Davin became an inspector, it felt like he had turned into a completely different person. He was particularly fastidious about the rules, and the way he did things was very comforting. It's nothing. I just came as well, said Lu Davin with a smile. He entered the cave abode upon Wang Baol's invitation. However, he was always one step behind Wang Baol. This scene made Wang Baol feel like he had learned a new trick. After entering the cave abode, Lu Dabin deftly cleaned the place, moving the mini empty ice spirit water bottles and snack bags into a corner. Following that, he took out some spirit tea in a very practiced manner before offering it to Wang Baol. This scene prompted Wang Baol to lift his teacup to take a sip, as well as ask out of curiosity, Davin, what does your family do? About that. My dad is the deputy city lord of our hometown, Phoenix City. To be honest, I have been frequently seeking my dad's help on how to do certain things, said Lou Davin with a little embarrassment and awkwardness. Deputy city lord? Wang Baol's eyes widened. He had a marvelous feeling rise up in him. Before he came to the Dow College, Phoenix City's deputy city lord had definitely been a major figure in Wang Baol's eyes. Now, such a major figure's son was under him. This made the marvelous feelings inside him become more intense. Ahem. Davin, it's almost the holidays. Speaking of which, this is the first time I've been away from home for such a long period of time. I kind of missed Phoenix City. Wang Baol coughed dryly, feeling inexplicably pleased as he put down his teacup. Chapter 36 The Talented Lou Davin. Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios. Although our Phoenix City is small, it's a place with quite an abundance of treasures such as its local products. Head Prefect, I wasn't acquainted with you in the past, but for the vacation this time, you have to give me a chance to shine, Lou Dabin said immediately. In fact, he had no intention of taking up the career of an official, but ever since Swang Baol promoted him in the Dow College, he realized that being an inspector seemed to suit him even more. Especially with him now having realized that whatever he had seen and learned from his father from a young age was bearing fruit ever since he became inspector. Wang Baol was very pleased hearing what Lu Dabin had to say. He smiled slightly and asked him more about the college discipline department before raising his tea cup. This motion of lifting his tea was something he learned from his high officials' autobiographies. In it, Wang Baol discovered that many high officials seemed to enjoy drinking tea. From time to time, they would lift their tea cup, and a lot of knowledge could be gained in between the time the tea cup was lifted and placed down. Although he did not understand it completely, he felt that such an action brought out his stature, therefore, he began mimicking it. When Lu Dabin noticed Wang Bao lifting the teacup, he was taken aback. He recalled the actions his father took when he was with his subordinates. He immediately understood that Wang Bao was done with exchanging pleasantries with him. Wang Bao was waiting for him to explain the reason for his appearance here. Therefore, he took out a package from his bag. He placed spirit stones, pills, and some daggers, which were not dharmic artifacts, to the side. 
head prefect, after I became an inspector, many students came to gift me items. Some of these gifts are very valuable. In my fluster, I was unsure whether I should accept them or not. Accepting them makes me a little disturbed, but not accepting them makes me afraid that I'll disappoint their sincerity. Lu Dabin smiled dryly as he looked at Wang Bei O, oh, his eyes looking very candid. A hint of surprise flashed in Wang Bei O's oh eyes. He had recently heard people at the college discipline department snitching about Lu Dabin accepting bribes. However, all Wang Bei Ol did was take middle note of it and not question his subordinate. Now that he was seeing these items, Wang Bei Ol's attitude toward Lu Dabin was that of satisfaction and approval. They're not overly valuable items. You should not disappoint the students given how sincere they are. Keep them. Wang Bei Ol smiled as he lifted the teacup and placed it down again. Lu Dabin was observing Wang Bei Ol's expression from the very beginning. When he saw Wang Bei Ol's smile looking warmer than before, he immediately heaved a sigh of relief. He knew that he had taken the right course of action. Hence, he cupped his fists and thanked Wang Bei Ol. He took back half the items he had taken out, leaving behind two of the most valuable pills as he said, Head Prefect, you aren't lacking in anything. I'm just offering a gift to you at the expense of others to show my sincerity as your subordinate. I will never forget how you saved me during the hallucination nexus test. He cupped his fists again. He raised the issue about the test once again since it was this matter that was the intrinsic reason for having a better relationship with Wang Bei Ol than others. Oh? Wang Bei Ol's eyes lit up. He felt that Lu Dabin seemed to be much wiser with his choice of words. Furthermore, he could learn things him. He felt that Lu Dabin's words especially comforted him and he could tell the intent from them. He beamed even more as he raised his hand and pointed at Lu Dabin. Sigh, you can stop with your probes. Take them for yourself. Lu Dabin gave an embarrassed look but did not store away the items. He stood there and chatted with Wang Bei O. Oh. As for Wang Bei O, oh, he did not tell to him to take away the gifts again either. After asking about Lu Dabin's studies and giving him a few words of encouragement, Wang Bei Ol picked up his teacup again and sipped it. This time, it was a way to politely ask Lu Dabin to leave. Wang Bei Ol felt that Lu Dabin must have learned the knowledge from his father and would likely know his intention. He was also very pleased with his ability at handling official situations. Head Prefect, I do have a presumptuous request. I hope you can agree to something on account of my diligent hard work. Lu Dabin took a deep breath as though he did not notice Wang Bei Ol's intentions. He cupped his fists and gave a deep bow to Wang Bei Ol. He picked up an empty ice spirit water and looked extremely earnest. Head Prefect, can you give me this bottle? What did you say? Wang Bei Ol frowned immediately when he realized that Lu Dabin did not seem to have understood his intentions. But when he heard his request, he was also taken aback. He nearly spewed out the mouthful of tea while looking at Lu Dabin in a daze. Wang Baol never expected that Lu Dabin's serious request would be for an empty bottle. Lu Dabin quickly went forward to pat Wang Baol on the back as he spoke with a very earnest tone. Head Prefect, don't belittle this bottle. You might not be aware, but currently in Head Prefect Pavilion, and even in the Dharmic Armament Faculty, there are too many students who revere you greatly. After all, you are not only a talented person who managed to become head prefect in less than a year. More importantly, with the connivance of Jiang Lin, the inspectors abused their power, causing many of the students to fear them and not speak a word despite their anger. Furthermore, with you reforming the college discipline department, everyone appreciates it. Everyone wishes to rub off a bit of your otherworldly aura. If this bottle is taken out by me, everyone will go nuts for it. My trip here was actually due to a request from everyone. They wish for you will sell them the empty bottles and snack bags on account of how diligent they have been. Lu Dabin looked gingerly at Wang Baol after he finished his sentence. Wang Baol slowed down his breathing. He had seen many gift rejection instances from the high officials' autobiographies. All sorts of gifting methods had been used, but what Lu Dabin had done was a first. His expression could not help but turn odd as he pondered or if it was something Lu Dabin had learned from his father. 
With this thought in mind, Wang Bao came to a greater realization that Lu Dabin's father was someone rather extraordinary. Head Prefect, please be sympathetic toward them and give them a chance. Lu Dabin had a look as if he was bemoaning the fate of all mankind. He bowed once again, looking as though he would not get up if he did not receive Wang Bao's agreement. Finally, under Lu Dabin's repeated pleas, Wang Bao finally sighed reluctantly. Fine, fine. It's true I should not disappoint everyone. However, be sure not to make this a precedent. Also, Davin, you must not disappoint everyone with matters in the college discipline department. Remember this well. Lu Davin immediately turned excited as he quickly thinked and gave his confirmation. He thought to himself how useful the trick his father had taught him was. Next, he picked up the empty bottles and snack bags from the ground as though they were treasures before leaving gratefully. Only when he left did Wang Bao suddenly stand up. He circled his cave abode a few times before taking out his tiny notebook, recording everything that Lu Dabin had used today. A talent, Lu Dabin is a talent. His father's abilities are even greater. He might one day become city lord. Wang Bao gave great approbation, feeling that he had widened his knowledge. Deep down, he enjoyed the feeling of being fawned upon, especially when the flattery was so ingeniously executed. It left Wang Bao even more satisfied. Three days quickly passed. When Lu Dabin came again, he brought more than ten pill bottles with him. These pills were meant to supplement one's memory. Although the effects were inferior to those that Xing Liang had gifted, Wang Bao legally needed them. Wang Bao could not help but sigh once again upon seeing this. Lu Dabin was indeed a talent. His belief was that he could not disappoint such a talent so a reward was needed. After some thought, Wang Bao suddenly spoke up just before Lu Dabin was about to leave. Dabin, investigate Sun Kafeng's case. Wang Bao had previously read about Sun Kafeng's case when he took over the college discipline department. It had contained detailed information and background of the person in question from when he was young, much of which was unknown to outsiders. His family ran an artifact refinement shop and he came from an honest family. He had once been a student of the Dharmic Armament faculty, but he had violated the Dao College's rules by stealing a recipe from the Dharmic Armament faculty's treasure repository. This secret recipe contained the creation method of a particular spirit kernel. He had planned on handing over the recipe to his family clan after stealing it. After all, Nearly all the artifact refinement recipes in the Federation were in the hands of the four great Dao Colleges. Ethereal Dao Colleges Dharmic Armament lineage was the best among the four great Dao Colleges, so it contained an extremely huge number of recipes. Furthermore, there was a very strict confidentiality about them. Students that failed to reach a particular level had little chance of coming into contact with them. Even if they did, the knowledge was not to be spread externally. Although Sun Kafeng had stolen the recipe because he had some skill, he had not been fast enough to take it away before being discovered by the Spirit Stone's head prefect pavilion's inspectors. He had been remanded to the Spirit Stone's college discipline department, awaiting Wang Bao's final decision. As the recipe that was stolen was not particularly important, the matter's importance was variable. Back when Wang Bao read the case, he had immediately sensed that something was odd about it. However, his mind had not been with it, so he had paid no attention to it. He planned on getting his men to investigate the matter before fairly handling it. Now, with Lu Dabin being so sensible, he decided to hand a case to him. Handling such a case in the college discipline department represented power itself. When investigating Sun Kifeng, make sure to have a sense of propriety. Wang Bao gave Lu Dabin a look before lifting his teacup again. This time, he did not immediately place it down. Lu Dabin was pondering over Sun Kafeng's case that Wang Bao had mentioned when he noticed Wang Bao lift up his teacup. He immediately understood that Wang Bao was politely signaling for him to leave. He bade farewell and left. Wang Bao smiled smugly when he saw Lu Dabin's departing back. He felt that he had learned a lot from Lu Dabin. By fusing it with the high official's autobiographies, he was already very adept in the art of handling subordinates. 
he took another look at the pills as he took them out one by one. After carefully studying to confirm that they had not been unsealed before and that there were no problems with them, he swallowed the pills with glee. In a good mood, he continued his memorization of inscriptions. Meanwhile, Lou Davin, who had walked out of Wang Bei Ol's cave abode, quickly contacted his father on the way back to his dormitory. His eyes lit up when his father pointed out the crux of the matter. So, the crux of what head prefect said was in his last sentence. Have a sense of propriety. Chapter 37, Federation Framework Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios Days later, Wang Baol had memorized about 70 to 80,000 inscriptions. The reason he was so fast had to do with the crystal memory pills and the memory enhancement pills Lu Dabin had given him. Although the effects of those pills were good, they were just not enough. It left Wang Baol depressed. Even as head prefect, there were not enough of these pills to go around even if he had spirit stones. Simultaneously, the students from the inscriptions hall had a high demand for them. Therefore, purchasing more was taking quite some time. Even if he used his authority as head prefect, he was unable to match the speed at which he expended the pills. Most importantly, Wang Bei Ol understood that it was not a long-term solution since the Chi Fostering Art had explained that pills were only effective in the early stages. Things related to memory would quickly result in a drug resistance, and ultimately, one had to rely on one's own hard work. It was only worth it if he could obtain pills that were even more effective, ones that could aid him in memorizing more than a hundred thousand inscriptions, even if they did have a limit. As such, he contacted Zi Haiyang, but even Zi Haiyang required time to obtain higher quality pills. However, he did tell Wang Bei Ol that Ethereal City had an underground black market that he might be able to obtain some from. He also told Wang Bei Ol the method to enter the underground black market. However, he finally warned Wang Bei Ol that although spirit stones were a common currency in the black market, there were certain priceless treasures that one could only obtain through an exchange of goods. Also, he needed to hide his identity as that place was filled with all sorts of characters. If he was not careful, he might attract trouble. Just as Wang Baol was vexing over the problem of memorization, Lu Dabin came once again. The moment they met, he immediately came forward and spoke politely. Head Prefect, Sun Kafeng's case has been investigated thoroughly. There are indeed some problems with the case. What problems are there? Wang Baol put down the inscription dictionary in his hand and pressed his burgeoning forehead. Just as he was about to take a bottle of ice spirit water, he realized that Lu Dabin had already taken the initiative to hand him a bottle from his bag. Such a caring act left Wang Bei Ol very pleased. This Sun Kafeng is quite a pitiful person. It was only a trivial case of theft, and before he succeeded, he was caught. As a result, Jang Lin used this as a way to exhort half his son family's fortune. Jang Lin threatened to send Sun Kafeng to the Dao College's courts for internal judgment if his request was not met. Head Prefect, now that their family has heard that you have reformed the department, they took the initiative to seek me. They asked if we could be merciful on this matter. Head Prefect, what do you think about it? Asked Lu Dabin with a whisper. Wang Bao got a clearer picture of the situation after being briefed. He had a general guess about the case, and now that Lu Dabin had investigated and confirmed his conjecture, he came to a decision. Sun Kafeng was indeed at fault. But Jang Lin had gone too overboard. He sighed deeply and raised his head to speak to Lu Dabin. Sun Kafeng is indeed at fault in this case. However, the punishment does not need to be so severe. Take disciplinary action on him and put him on probation in the college. He can be let off once he shows signs of rehabilitation. Head Prefect, you are strict and impartial. I'm impressed. Lu Dabin marveled as he cupped his fists. Lu Dabin's words delighted Wang Baol greatly. He slowly drank the ice spirit water on the table. Noticing that Wang Baol was in a good mood, Lu Dabin took a few steps forward and whispered into Wang Baol's ear, in order to express their gratitude, his family is willing to donate half a kilogram of 90% pure mystic silver sand to our college discipline department. Mystic silver sand? 
Wang Bao blinked. He knew about it. It was a kind of material that was often required in the refinement of high-quality dharmic artifacts. He took another look at Lu Dabin and knew that Lu Dabin had received a form of bribery. However, Wang Bao had his own judgment of this case and knew that, even if Lu Dabin was biased, he would not dare twist facts. In addition, the Sun family was skilled at navigating about interpersonal relations. They had not given it in private to him, but instead gifted the college discipline department. Furthermore, he had already decided on handling the case impartially, so it was not a form of bribery or extortion. Therefore, he picked up the ice spirit water and considered his words before replying. Davin, do you know the one thing I regret most in my life? It's becoming head prefect. I didn't want to become head prefect at all. That way, I would not encounter so many troubles. That way, I would have lots of time to study. Whatever, I'll leave the matter of the gifts to our college discipline department to you. However, make sure not to do it without thought. Everything has to be done justly," Wang Bao said with a sigh, as he swept Lu Dabin with his gaze. These words were things he had learned from the high officials' autobiographies. Lu Dabin hurriedly gave the affirmative to expression his loyalty, as well as indicate that he remembered Wang Bao's teachings. Wang Bao smiled before have a short chat with him. Finally, he yawned, to which Lu Dabin immediately understood. He respectfully took his leave. Once Lu Dabin was gone, Wang Bao sat there and finished the ice spirit water in his hand in one gulp. His mind was still ruminating over Sun Kafang's case. Although the case was settled, Wang Bao realized that the four great Dao colleges held a very high status in the federation from this matter. The power a head prefect had over the students was enough to make a family clan enter a fix. Although it was not a big and powerful family clan, the general implications were enough to prove the extraordinary status the Dao College had. In fact, Wang Bao had heard of some of these matters in the past and knew that although the four great Dao Colleges appeared separate, they were a complete system akin to the Federation. They were bound together for good or ill. It appeared like a massive entity and enjoyed an extremely high status in the Federation. Be it the former or present Federation president, they had come from the four great Dao Colleges. There were even innumerable official positions that were helmed by graduates of the four great Dao colleges. It could even be said that more than half of the Federation's positions were part of the four great Dao colleges system. However, there was another party that maintained a balance within the Federation, they were the 17-member Senate. The 17 city lords of the 17 main cities formed the 17-member Senate. They could decide on the main governmental policies of the Federation and could restrict the Federation president. Of course, this also was intrinsically tied to one's cultivation and the number of experts. Although both parties seemed to balance each other, appearing united outwardly but divided at heart, there were other factions from all over the world that resembled nobles that forced them to be united. The noble-like factions had formed an independent system among themselves due to the history of the Beast Wars as well as their retrieval of the cosmic ancient swords fragments. Wang Bao paid attention to the news and knew that they were the Trilunaries Corporation, Galactic Dusk Sect, Plume Manifestation Khanate Sect, and the Five Generation Sky Clan. These four factions seemed submissive to the Federation on the surface, acknowledging that they were part of the Federation, but in fact, they were highly autonomous and were part of a separatist regime. Although any faction could not resist the Federation in its entirety, their combined forces was enough to make the Federation apprehensive. Now that he was head prefect, Wang Bao finally got a deeper understanding of this power. After some thought, he determined that the way he had dealt with the situation was fine and that he had a clear conscience. With that, he patted his belly in satisfaction and picked up the inscription dictionary to continue memorizing the inscriptions. Three days passed in the blink of an eye. When Lu Dabin came again, he brought with him the mystic silver sand. Each sand particle was resplendent and glaring to the eye. They appeared like gems when they caught the light and appeared extremely hard. After Wang Bao saw them, he felt that these items were extraordinary. Head Prefect this mystic silver sand is given by the Sun family to thank the college discipline department for being impartial. Head Prefect, 
I shall defer its handling to you. Wang Baol took a look at the mystic silver sand and then back at Lu Dabin. There was a deep, knowing look in his eyes that made Lu Dabin somewhat nervous. Sweat began dripping from his forehead, and only after some time did Wang Baol say coolly, just this once. Upon hearing Wang Baol's words, Lu Dabin immediately gave the affirmative. He did not notice that his back was already wet. Wang Baol's cold gaze had given him immense pressure. He knew that Wang Baol was acutely aware of the dealings he had with the Sun family. Although he had benefited from the Sun family, he had investigated the matter justly and did not show partiality for Sun Kafeng. He gradually understood Wang Baol's principles and knew that Wang Baol's principles were different from his father's judgment. He had made a mistake from the very beginning. Wang Baol's mention of propriety was that he had to go by established norms while doing the investigation and not ask for bribes. When he came to this realization, Lu Dabin drew a deep gasp. He looked at Wang Baol with an even deeper sense of reverence. He knew how to act in the future. Wang Baol did not take all of the mystic silver sand, instead, he divided a portion for Lu Dabin so that he could give it to the rest of the college discipline department. After sending off Lu Dabin, Wang Baol did not look at the mystic silver sand. He knew that such refinement materials were not of much practical use to him for the time being. What I need the most now are some high-quality memory supplements. Wang Baol thought for a moment and decided to take some of the mystic silver sand to exchange them for better pills at the underground black market. To do exchanges in the black market one needed to conceal one's identity to prevent any unnecessary trouble. Wang Baol was cognizant of such common knowledge. Therefore, he disguised himself and left the Dao College. On the way, he looked down at his figure and scratched his head. This won't do. My figure is too slim. It's easy for others to recognize me. The vexed Wang Baol gritted his teeth and found a store to buy a set of tight clothing. After putting it on, he felt that the effects were not particularly effective with his flesh bound tightly inside his clothes. Sigh, it's time to lose weight. Wang Baol was somewhat vexed. He felt that he was the person hardest on himself when it came to losing weight, but he could not slim down for some reason. No, I will continue to lose weight from tomorrow. Wang Baol's eyes refused a look of determination. He bought another seven or eight sets of clothes and wore all of them. Finally, he disguised his figure completely and finally wore a loose robe. From his body's shape, even someone familiar would hardly be able to recognize him at a glance. However, it was just so tight that Wang Baol found it difficult to breathe. But in order to prevent his identity from being exposed, he put up with it. He found a mask to wear as his entire person changed drastically, and he rushed for the underground black market. From today forth, I will not eat meals. I'll be dieting. On the way, Wang Baol walked very stiffly, afraid that he would burst his tight clothes accidentally. Therefore, he resolved once again to lose weight. However, the moment he made up his mind, he could not help but pause when he passed by a snacks shop. This is. Wang Baol licked his lips as he looked at the advertisement stand placed outside the shop. There was a poster hung on it that showed the latest snacks. He struggled for a moment. Since I start dieting tomorrow, it shouldn't matter if I buy some more today. With this in mind, Wang Bao quickly bought a few bags. He walked as he ate, and when he finished it, the satisfied him had arrived at the underground black market. The pill exchange process went smoothly. Soon, Wang Bao had exchanged for a sufficient number of high-quality pills and left the black market. As he walked in the bustling ethereal city to find a place to take off his tight clothes, he suddenly heard a scream from further down the street he was on. Quick, dodge. Heavens, how can you drive a cruiser like that? It's falling. The shouts came from countless passers-by on the road. The yells in the sky were piercing to the ears as Wang Bao quickly looked over after recovering from his shock. He saw a cruiser emitting thick smoke and plummeting straight to the ground as though it had lost control. The cruiser was too fast. Even though people fled in panic, there were still some people who failed to dodge in time. One of them was a seven or eight year old girl who was carrying a backpack. She stood rooted to the ground in fear. 
before she could even cry, the cruiser had plummeted right down at her. Even though the young girl did not suffer a direct hit, her body was battered and bruised. Immediately, she was covered in blood as she flew out, and by the time she landed on the ground, she was barely breathing. The bloody face made the hearts of everyone who saw her tremble. The crowd who saw the scene broke out into an angry uproar. When Wang Bao rushed over and saw all of this, his expression changed. Rage filled his eyes when he noticed the people walking out from the crashed cruiser. Chapter 38, Apologize Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios Although the cruiser had plummeted to the ground, damaging several of the surrounding buildings and leaving a deep crater in the ground, its surface did not appear damaged. The door to the cruiser had opened and four youths walked out of it. The four of them were wearing ethereal Dow College student robes, and from the logos on their clothing, they were students of the Dharmic Armament faculty. The moment they appeared, the angry mob around them drew gasps. None of them dared speak loudly. Instead, they murmured in discussion. After all, Ethereal Dao College was one of the four great Dao Colleges of the Federation. Furthermore, it was connected to Ethereal City. Many of the students who graduated would take up positions in the various departments in the Federation. Such a Dao College had an unimaginably strong heritage. It would have been fine if the accident involved them, but now, with the accident having nothing much to do with them, the crowd did not wish to cross the students verbally. Also, it was clear at a glance that the four youths came from quite spectacular backgrounds. The four youths who walked out of the cruiser completely ignored the crowd. They were even chatting jubilantly as though nothing had happened. They had also seen the girl that their cruiser had sent flying, but they thought nothing of her. One of them casually lifted his voice transmission ring and gave a few instructions after making the connecting call. Something happened. Help us deal with it. With that said, he looked at the students beside him and sighed. Huang Jing, do you know how to drive a cruiser? That is Han Lu's graduation work. What do you think about this matter, Han Lu? Zhang Lan, isn't it all because you nudged me? But then again, Han Lu, I'm sorry about this. The youth named Wang Jing shrugged his shoulders with a wry smile. The youth named Han Lu, who was being looked at by the other two, had a dark and heavy expression. He quickly walked to the cruiser, where he examined the damage, before he turned his head in contempt to look at the barely breathing girl. It's nothing major. It just got stained by a bit of blood. Rubbing it off will do. They pretended as though the crowd didn't exist and their attitude toward the bloody girl was of complete indifference. Immediately, the surrounding crowd fumed, but they could only put up with it when they saw ethereal Dao college robes they donned. All of this was seen by Wang Bei O. Oh. The anger in him grew. From Jing Lin's case, he knew that the college was not some safe space, but he had never imagined that ethereal Dao college students thought so little of innocent lives. In addition, they placed themselves above ordinary people because of their status as Dao College students. This scene added an addition coldness to Wang Bei Ol's fuming gaze. Just as he was about to take a few steps forward, a spectator beside him held him back out of goodwill, and murmured, Don't go over. They are people from Ethereal Dao College. Once they graduate, each one of them will be an elite. Furthermore, from how they appear fearless, it's clear that their family clan is powerful. They are not people we can provoke. Wang Bei Ol's expression was grim and solemn underneath his mask. He gently struggled free from the person and continued walking straight forward. He did not walk toward the four ethereal Dao college students and instead came to the girl. As he looked at her blood covered face, his body trembled slightly. He pressed down on the barely breathing child, directed spirit chi into her body, and said gently, Little girl, don't be afraid you will be fine. With that said, Wang Baol took out some of the pills he had bought from the alchemy faculty back then and fed them to her. Brother, I'm in pain. I'm so scared. I want mommy. The girl had been in shock previously, but now, having seen Wang Baol and heard his gentle voice, she immediately cried. Her voice was weak, as though she could not last much longer. Little girl, don't be afraid. You will be fine. Wang Bei Ol stroked the girl's head and increased the amount of spirit chi he injected. While treating the girl's wounds, 
he placed even more pills in her mouth. Although her injury was heavy, the recuperation pills the alchemy faculty refined were very miraculous for ordinary mortals. Soon, the girl's injuries took a turn for the better. Under Wang Baol's nourishing spirit Qi, she gradually fell asleep. Meanwhile, the four youths who had alighted from the cruiser smiled when they saw this happen, as though they felt that the matter had been settled. Therefore, they began engaging in banter while planning to turn and leave. Even Zhang Lan, who had previously sent a voice transmission for manpower, took out his voice transmission ring and said that there was no need for their presence. This contemptuous act, to the point of not even apologizing, made all the spectators burn with anger. Although none of them dared berate them in public, it was obvious from their eyes. This scene similarly infuriated Wang Bei O. Oh. His fury was set alight as he carried the girl closer to the spectating crowd and put her down gently. He turned to look coldly at the few ethereal Dao college students and said in a deep voice, Stop! Wang Bei O's oh. voice was ice cold. There was no courtesy in his words as he shouted what the crowd did not dare say. When has Ethereal Dao College admitted such scum that are devoid of conscience? The moment Wang Bei Ol said that sentence, the four students who were prepared to leave came to a halt. They turned to look coldly at Wang Bei Ol. Zhang Lan, who had sent a voice transmission to his family clan, clearly had the hottest temper. He immediately walked toward Wang Bei Ol. Who are you? Do you have a death wish? How dare you scold me? I'm Ethereal Dao College's Dharmic Armament. Zhang Lan's tone was unfriendly. As he grumbled, he approached to push Wang Bei O. Oh. But before he finished his sentence, Wang Bei O oh instantly raised his right hand and grabbed the youth's finger. While fuming in anger, he showed no mercy and bent the finger before raising his foot to aim at his knee and kicking it. A crack sounded instantly as a sharp cry that did not sound human was uttered from the youth's mouth. He felt an excruciating pain as he stumbled more than ten hops away on one foot before collapsing to the ground. This scene left the hearts of the surrounding crowd stirring. Heavens, he actually dared attack Ethereal Dao College's students. This masked guy is in big trouble. It's so rare to see people rising gallantly to the occasion these days. This person is too foolish. The crowd gasped one after another. The expressions of the three Ethereal Dao College students changed as they immediately drew their weapons and circulated their cultivation. Who are you? How gutsy you are. We are from Ethereal Dao College. We are Dharmic Armament faculty students. If you dare resort to violence, we will make you regret living in this world. The trio was alarmed and furious. As they bellowed angrily, Wang Bei Ol sneered. Others might have been afraid of Ethereal Dao College students, but he wasn't. Just as he was about to attack, a shout was heard nearby. The crowd quickly parted as more than ten strong men in combat attire charged forward. In front of the men was an elder. He had a pulse enrichment cultivation level, and his eyes had a sharp glint to them. Just as he was about to speak, he noticed Zhang Lan wailing on the ground. Immediately, his expression changed. Young master! The elder yelled as he rushed forward to help him up. The strong men behind him looked menacingly at Wang Bei O as they quickly surrounded him. They had almost arrived back when they received the voice transmission, therefore, they did not return but instead continued rushing over. As the elder saw that his young lord's finger was purplish black and twisted, obvious that it had been snapped, he immediately raged. He looked up with killing intent and shouted coldly, How dare you to resort to violence in broad daylight? After the elder said that, Zhang Lan, who had his finger broken from Wang Bei Ol's bending, shouted at his subordinates with a distorted expression while sweating profusely from the pain, What are you waiting for? Beat him to death. It hurts so badly. When the four strong men heard that, they charged straight for Wang Bei Ol fiercely. The three Ethereal Dao College students also heaved a sigh of relief. They had been alarmed by Wang Bei Ol's attack as well. Now that their schoolmate's family was here, they looked at Wang Bei Ol with derision. Wang Bei Ol's fury was not appeased. Be it in the Dao College or at the Freestyle Fight Club, he had held back when he fought apart from fighting the Fight Club's young mistress, but now, in his rage, a cold glint flashed in Wang Bei Ol's eyes when the men approached him. 
he suddenly took one step forward. He gave a direct punch that seemed to tear space itself. It landed on a strong man's body, and he spewed out blood. His body bent like a shrimp as his entire being was sent flying. Wang Baol did not stop. He raised his right foot and swept it. With two thuds, another two strong men spewed out mouthfuls of blood before landing unconscious from receiving a direct kick. It was this moment that the other men had come close, but Wang Baol was just too fast. Turning around, he grabbed a person's wrist and cleanly twisted it before raising his right foot to kick another person in the crotch ruthlessly. As Wang Baol walked forward, not one of the ten strong men managed to last more than a few seconds. Amid the shock of the crowd, they collapsed to the ground, groaning incessantly in pain. A cold glint flashed in the pulse enrichment realm elder's eyes. He charged forward at the instant Wang Baol turned around. He raised his right hand, which produced a tiger's roar. It even appeared as though a ferocious black tiger had appeared around the elder. But at the instant the elder came close, Wang Baol's devouring seed instantly activated even though his body was sideways. A stunning suction force immediately influenced the surroundings, forming an invisible vortex. The elder's expression changed as his body changed direction involuntarily. By then, Wang Baol had already turned around, his right hand raised to grab the elder's wrist. With a crack, the elder's wrist was suddenly snapped as he cried out in pain. Wang Baol kicked the elder in the crotch, using extreme force. With a boom, the elder spewed out a mouthful of blood. Even his crotch bled as he was sent flying before he landed on the ground convulsing. This scene left the onlookers holding their breaths. They were shocked stiff. Wang Baol had been extremely fast in his battle with the elder. It was also very straightforward and extremely ruthless. They could not help but be stunned. The three students widened their eyes as well. As for Zhang Lan, who had his finger broken, he was pale in the face. His eyes were filled with horror as he was crawling backwards. However, Wang Baol appeared next to him in one step. He stepped on the youth's twisted finger, and as the youth cried out, Wang Baol said lightly, Apologize. Chapter 39, Right? Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios This word seemed to transform into a force when Wang Baol said it. It made the blood that coursed through the surrounding crowd's bodies speed up as intense looks appeared in their eyes. They knew that Wang Baol was seeking justice for the girl by demanding an apology. They did not have the ability to do such things, but having seen someone do it, they immediately became excited. Ardor and zeal coursed through their blood as they looked at the youth who had his fingers stepped on. Stop! No matter who you are, you are in big trouble. How dare you resort to violence for such a trivial matter? The other three ethereal Dao college students nearby were panicking. They growled at Wang Baol as a front to hide their timidness. As for Zhang Lan, whose fingers were stepped on by Wang Bao, he clenched his teeth hatefully to endure the pain while glaring at Wang Bao. If gazes could kill, Wang Bao would have long been dead. How smug of you to bully us! You can be smug now. You are strong just because you have cultivated a few years more than us, but our future is different. In a few years, you will be nothing in front of us. Zhang Lan's eyes were extremely vicious. As he hissed for breath through his clenched teeth, he enunciated each word hatefully. I've seen many instances of people like you. Do you dare kill us? This is Ethereal City. We are from Ethereal Dao College. Prepare to be arrested. As for the few of us, even if we have done wrong, it should be Ethereal Dao College that questions us. An irrelevant person like you has no right to order me. With that said, the vicious look in Zhang Lin's eyes turned even more intense. I do not have the right? Wang Bao looked at the contemptuous youth in the trio that appeared afraid but felt contempt toward him deep down. He nodded. Then, does being Spirit Stone's Hall Head Prefect of Ethereal Dao College's Dharmic Armament Faculty give me the right? When Wang Bao said that, he took off his mask, and as he flexed his body, the tight clothes beneath his robes tore apart revealing his rotund figure one again. You! Head Prefect! Impossible! The instant Wang Baol said those words and took off his mask, 
the three dharmic armament faculty students screamed like they had seen in a ghost. Their eyes were filled with shock and disbelief as the color in their faces drained completely. As though they had lost all their strength, they stumbled to the ground. As for the contemptuous looking Zhang Lan, his entire body began trembling. He constantly gasped for air as his pupils dilated. The thoughts of his brave front from before were immediately overturned by tumultuous perturbations throughout his psyche as he exclaimed in shock. Wang Bei O. Oh. Their breathing became stifled while their expressions changed constantly at an unprecedented rate. They felt shock and horror so intense that it was indescribable. As Dao College students, they were unafraid of anyone. They could even ignore the officials of Ethereal City, but Wang Baol was different. He was head prefect of the Dharmic Armament faculty. He held power over their fates. And of all people, they had bumped right into Wang Baol. When they recalled their vicious words at Wang Baol and recalled the rumors about Wang Baol in the Dharmic Armament faculty, they immediately trembled as though they had lost half their lives. They lamented deep in their hearts as they felt faint. The servants around them were appalled as well. Even the elder who had been kicked in the crotch was struggling to regain his consciousness. Upon seeing this scene, he drew a gasp and fainted once again. Despite his vicious thoughts, he could not even muster the thought of revenge. He was even worried that Wang Bao would exact revenge on him. After all, his young master was a student of the Tao College. That's the head prefect. The onlookers were also shocked by the sudden turn of events. Their minds were abuzz as they watched in shock, mouths agape. The reversal was so jarring that went beyond their imagination. Wang Bao continued stepping on Zhang Lan's finger as he asked calmly, Now, do I have the right to make you apologize? Before Zhang Lan, who had his finger broken, could speak, the other three ethereal Dao college students immediately got up and rushed over to the girl and quickly apologized. Little girl, sorry, we did not do it intentionally. Little girl, please forgive us. The three students were desperate as their voices trembled. They were regretting their actions deeply for they knew very well the repercussions of being caught by Wang Bei O. Oh. Now, they were feeling anxious as their faces were brimming with tears. As for Zhang Lan, whose fingers were still being stepped on by Wang Bei O, oh, he even forgot the pain in his horror. He hurriedly apologized. All his arrogance had vanished the moment Wang Bei O oh took off his mask. As for compensation, he immediately roared at the men beside him. He immediately got them to find the best hospital and best doctors for the girl. Furthermore, the girl's parents were to be located and given the greatest compensation. The men also looked reverently at Wang Bei O. Oh. After obtaining Wang Bei O's oh approval, they ran off and carefully carried the girl, sending her to the hospital at the fastest speed possible. Wang Bei O oh believed that they would not dare pull any cheap tricks later on. After all, the quartet's future and fate could be determined at a snap of his finger. The four of you, do you want me to drag you back to the college discipline department after I beat the living crap out of you? Or do you want to follow me obediently? Make your choice. Wang Bao grunted coldly as he walked toward the Dao College with his arms behind his back. The four exchanged looks and saw the horror and bitterness in each other's eyes. They could only bite the bullet and get up, following Wang Bao with ashen faces. They couldn't even be bothered with a cruiser. They felt shaken the entire journey as they followed Wang Bao back to Dharmic Armament Peak. At the Spirit Stones Hall's College Discipline Department, they did not dare resist before being sent to the cells. Wang Bao planned to punish them severely for this matter. Furthermore, as Spirit Stones Hall's head prefect, he had not paid too much attention to such matters since he took office, but this was the first case where he had personally made an arrest. Be it Lu Dabin or the other inspectors, they knew very well that Wang Bao was truly furious about the matter and that he would make this case ironclad after they investigated. In addition, there were many witnesses for this case. Therefore, the Dao College only needed to follow the procedures before the matter was sent to the Dao College's internal courts, leaving it to them to handle the matter. As for the punishment, Wang Bao directly offered his preference. Expulsion This sort of extremely vile case for which he had made the arrest personally while providing ample evidence, 
was a very difficult matter to suppress even if the vice chancellor wanted to do so. In summary, Wang Baol's preference was the ultimate outcome. Soon, this matter spread in the Dharmic Armament faculty. No student wasn't alarmed after hearing the news. As they told themselves not to do something similar in the future, many of them cursed. They were naturally not cursing Wang Baol but the scum that had marred the reputation of the Dharmic Armament faculty. This news also quickly spread on the spirit internet, winning the kudos from many. After all, arrogance like the quartets was not common in the Tao College. Against such methods that incurred the wrath of both men and gods, they naturally had their own judgment. Simultaneously, Wang Baol's fame spread once again because of this matter. There were even many girls who felt more affectionate toward Wang Baol after catching wind of the matter. This was especially so for the young women in the alchemy faculty. After hearing that Wang Baol had used their pills to save someone, all of them sent Wang Baol voice transmission inquiries. There were even bold ones who directly asked him out on a date. As for the four students' family, they also turned anxious when they caught wind of the news. They tried their best to get Han Voice to ask for his mercy, but Wang Baol simply ignored them. Helpless, they saw the aid of Lu Dabin and the other inspectors, but knowing Wang Baol's attitude on this matter, none of them dared accept any bribes and rejected the requests categorically. Eventually, the family of the four students went to the inscription's head prefect, Cao Kun. That night, in Spirit Colonel Hall's head prefect pavilion, its head prefect, Lin Tian Hao, was sampling some spirit tea as he held an ancient scroll. Standing beside him was inscription's head prefect Cao Kun, who was whispering to him. Brother Lin, the others can be ignored but Zhang Lan. His family clan is willing to offer a fifth grade numinous treasure. Upon hearing the words numinous treasure, Lin Tian Hao looked up slightly with a thoughtful expression. One had to know that first and second grades were known as Dharmic artifacts. From the third to sixth grade, they were known as numinous treasures. At the seventh grade, they were considered Dharmic armaments. It could be said numinous treasures were already very valuable, much less a fifth grade numinous treasure. Even he was moved. Therefore, he took out his voice transmission ring and directly asked the vice chancellor about a particular matter. He then lowered it and smiled faintly. The Dow College's motion against the head prefects will begin in a few days with the Dharmic Armament faculty as a trial. This Wang Bao has been doing quite a bit recently, it's time for him to take a rest, Lin Tian Hao said as he lifted the spirit tea. He discovered that there wasn't much water in it, and before he put it down, Cao Kun had filled it to the brim with hot water. When the time comes, we will just release Zhang Lin and the rest. Lin Tian Hao smiled as he looked in the direction of the Spirit Stones Hall with a contemptuous expression. Cao Kun immediately turned excited when he heard that. Chapter 40, Head Prefects Reformation Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios Time flew, and three days passed. In these three days, Wang Baol was absorbed in memorizing the inscriptions with the help of the pills bought with the mystic silver sand from the black market. With the high-quality pills, Wang Baol was finally able to memorize 150,000 inscriptions. But he felt like dying. At this point, after having scratched his head swollen, Wang Baol took out his snacks to eat. However, upon taking out the bag of snacks, he found that they were covered with inscriptions, and the illusion sent him into a daze. What is happening? Wang Baol blinked furiously to clear his blurred vision. Before his eyes, the bag of snacks seemed to return to normal. Dazed, Wang Baol took some potato chips out of bag of snacks, but when he glanced at them, his eyes widened suddenly. How can there be inscriptions on these potato chips too, unless I have supernatural powers? Frightened, Wang Baol wondered if there was something wrong with him, as he was even seeing inscriptions on his snacks. In his panic, Wang Baol picked up the ice spirit water to calm his nerves. However, it seemed that even on the bottle, there were countless inscriptions swimming on the surface. This scene shocked Wang Bao. He stood up quickly but suddenly felt dizzy. In his vision, he could see even more inscriptions leading from the wall to the terrace. When he looked around, the sky, 
the earth, the grass, the trees, and even the air were filled with inscriptions. This scene caused Wang Bao to realize that it was not because he had supernatural powers, but because he had memorized too many inscriptions and eaten too many pills that he had started to experience the negative side effects described in the second half of the Chi Fostering Arts. He was starting to hallucinate. Heavens, these inscriptions are going to drive me crazy. His head spinning, Wang Bao realized that during this period of time, other than going out a few times, he had spent most of his time taking pills and memorizing. Having to memorize the 150,000 Tao inscriptions, he had relied on the combined power of the pills collected in his head. This had taken a huge toll on him mentally, and he had gradually begun to hallucinate. In the spirit inception era, it was not uncommon to have students of the Dharma Karmament faculty driven mad while memorizing these inscriptions. After all, such shocking memorization work was extremely horrifying. Even with words, those in common usage were only a few thousand. The sum of 150,000 was so large that it was like memorizing the words of many different languages. 1,000 years ago, this feat would not have been possible. However, with the arrival of the spirit inception era and the ubiquitous chief fostering art, humans' bodies and minds had undergone metamorphosis. As such, the impossible had become possible. Nevertheless, the inscriptions and words still had their differences. However, even though they were different, if one did not look carefully, it was difficult to tell them apart. As such, this made the memorization exponentially more difficult, especially as one needed to understand the different meanings. Each inscription had a different effect, so Wang Bao felt like he was going mad memorizing the inscriptions. Even though his feat could not be considered amazing in the Dharmic Armament faculty, what made Wang Bao the most dispirited was the fact that while he could memorize 150,000 inscriptions, one person out of ten would be able to mash him. After all, among the students who were able to enter the four main Dao colleges, there were many top students. Furthermore, he had yet to match these inscriptions. After all, this involved the study of spirit kernels, otherwise, it would have been far more difficult. In addition, with the appearance of the hallucinations, Wang Bao was even more terrified of taking more pills. He was worried that if he continued to memorize as before, he would really go mad. When he remembered that he had yet to become the Federation president, Wang Bao felt that he definitely had to stay sane. At the same time, he could not resist imagining how he would not be able to control his weight if he went mad then he would definitely have to reunite with his fatso forefathers. At this thought, he imagined himself drooling and stupidly memorizing inscriptions with the fatso forefathers. Stop thinking about it. Wang Bao shuddered violently and exhaled. Feeling like he could not continue this way, he paused for a moment before picking up the second half of the chief fostering art and flipping through it. While memorizing 100,000 inscriptions fits the basic requirements of the inscriptions hall, I should stop memorizing and begin studying spirit kernels first. By matching both of them, won't the effect be even better? Wang Bao felt that this was a good idea, so he immediately started to research spirit kernels. The study of spirit kernels was the skill of carving the inscriptions onto the spirit stones. One needed to practice thoroughly before mastering the skill while remembering a massive number of spirit kernel formulations. These spirit kernel formulations recorded the method of matching the different inscriptions. Through matching and carving practice, one would finally refine a spirit kernel. It might have sounded easy, but in actual fact, it was difficult to learn. However, to Wang Bao, as long as he did not need to memorize the inscriptions, he was willing to do anything else. Thus, with this research, he took out the spirit stones and started practicing his carving. Just like that, the days passed. Under this painful study, Wang Bao continually tried to find various ways of studying, but his results never seemed to improve. Just as he reached his breaking point of depression, where he hoped he could have ripped the book of chief fostering art, there were suddenly rumors traveling about Ethereal Dao College. These rumors were related to the head prefects. It painted a vivid picture of how the four main Dao colleges were successively reforming their head prefect systems. 
Because of the old rules, this gave the head prefects alarming powers. As each had their own administration, each faculty was in a state of disunity. As they were too divided, it was unlikely for them to unite, so a complete reshuffle was necessary. To put it simply, changing the system meant establishing a head prefect assembly in every faculty. Each head prefect had the power of one vote, and through a vote, the majority would manage their faculty's college discipline department. Among the four main Dow colleges, White Deer Dow College had already started implementing the new regulations. As for the other three, White Deer Branch College, Holy River Dow College, and Ethereal Dow College, they would have to choose a faculty as a starting point. Once it succeeded, it would begin to be implemented throughout the Lower Academy Island. The rumors had spread quickly, immediately eliciting many opinions. Even though it was only a rework of the head prefect system, in actual fact, a small segment would affect the large parts. The moment the head prefect changed, it would affect the college discipline department and all students. Among the numerous discussions, each faculty's head prefects grew impatient. They each used their own networks to learn about the news. Even though Wang Baol was in seclusion memorizing his inscriptions, the moment Lu Dabin and the others heard about the rumors, they grew nervous and went to look for Wang Baol to find out more. When Wang Baol heard about the situation, he was also stunned. Rubbing the area between his brows, he asked Zhang Liang about the rumors. However, while Zhang Liang was shrewd, he did not know much about the situation either. Just as the whole Dao College was paying close attention to the situation, and just as all the faculty's head prefects were at different levels of nervousness, the Chancellor made an announcement to the whole Dao College, confirming that there would be a rework of the head prefect system. The original head prefect system will be abolished, and it would be changed to the head prefect assembly voting system. This measure starts with the Dharmic Armament faculty. The moment the announcement went out, the students from the other faculties let out sighs of relief. As for the students of the Dharmic Armament faculty, they were all very much shaken, and any observant person could see that the Dharmic Armament faculty would be thrown into chaos. As for Lu Dabin and the others, they were extremely worried after hearing the announcement. For Wang Bei O, oh, this kind of assembly system was extremely disadvantageous. Wang Bei O oh received the news immediately. At the same time, Zhang Liang had also heard through the grapevine and sent a voice transmission to Wang Bei O. Oh. Junior brother Bei O, oh, you have to be careful. I heard that this pilot program was originally meant for the TRAPS faculty. But due to the application of the spirit Colonel Hall's head prefect, Lin Tian Hao, and the vice chancellor's strong support, this plan was changed to the Dharmic Armament faculty. Upon hearing Zhang Liang's words, Wang Bei O's expression changed. This situation was too sudden, and before Wang Bei O could think of any countermeasures, a strange voice suddenly emitted from his voice transmission ring. Spirit Stone's head prefect, Wang Bei O. I am Spirit Colonel Hall's head prefect, Lin Tian Hao. Following the Chancellor's instructions, please arrive at Spirit Colonel Head Prefect Pavilion early tomorrow morning for our first head prefect meeting. This was Lin Tian Hao's first time speaking to Wang Bei O. Oh. His voice was calm and emotionless, but there was a strange coercive power to it. It seemed as though it had emerged from the voice transmission ring and reverberated throughout Wang Bei O's cave abode.